Hi friends, Krista here. Thank you so much for stopping by Books and Jams. I am so glad that you are here. Do I have the same shirt on that I was just wearing in the booktube spin video? Yep, I sure do. Is it because I'm too lazy to go to my room and grab a new shirt? Yep, definitely is. <laughs> but we are here today to talk about all of the books that I have read so far in April and there are seven of them. Holy moly, we're only halfway through the month and I already have seven books to talk about. That's crazy. Every year in April, because it follows middle grade March, I try to leave a little bit of wiggle room in my reading for the month. So I try to set a smaller TBR. And I think I've accomplished that. I had five books on my TBR for this month, and I've read two of them so far. And then I have five other books that were just kind of whims. They just were what I was feeling like reading in the moment. But so let's first talk about the two books that I read that were on my TBR. And I need to tell you, I'm going to start right off with a bang because this book, Sparks Like Stars by Nadia Hashimi, has potential to be a favorite of the year or the favorite of the year. I absolutely loved this book so much. I don't even know what it is about it. I think it's a combination. So I thought the writing was spectacular, but the story was just so intriguing to me and so interesting intriguing might not be the best word, but in this book, we follow a young girl who lives in Afghanistan when she's very young. Her dad is connected to the president. He's one of the most trusted advisors of the president. And they spend a lot of time in the president's palace. She has friends. She's friends with the president's children. But it's in the 1970s. And the Cold War is kind of in full effect at that time. And America and Russia, USSR at the time are are kind of like vying for power and Afghanistan is just a pawn that's in the middle. But in the 1970s, there is a coup that takes place and Soviet, the Communist Party or people in Afghanistan, some of them who are even in the army, take over the, pre the government basically. And ultimately they go into the president's house and they kill all, all kinds of people. Like they just take over and kill everyone in their path. This little girl watches her parents die right in front of her face in, in a brutal way and goes into hiding in the castle. She knows the castle really well. She knows exactly where she wants to go and she goes into hiding. And eventually she has to even escape from Afghanistan completely. So there are people involved who help her with this. Uh, she comes to the United States, spends some time in foster care, which is not the greatest. Um, it does talk surface level about kind of like a potential sexual abuse situation. It does not go into any details, but if that's something that you are wary of, be aware that it's in here. So it's all pretty heavy and pretty sad. <laughs> but throughout all of this, we're learning about Afghanistan and what is going on politically there. Uh, she grows up in the United States for the majority of her life. And then as a young woman, as an adult, she really has this desire to go back to Afghanistan kind of for closure of everything that had happened to her as a child. And so we see at that point, it's in the, I want to say 90s. Is it in the 90s when she goes back to Afghanistan? 30 years after that night. So early 2000s, she wants to go back to, to, to Afghanistan. And at that point, the Taliban is now in control. She got to see a totally different Afghanistan than what she knew as a young child. And we got to see the differences as well. If you're a fan of Khalid Hosseini's The Kite Runner or uh, A Thousand Splendid Sons or The Mountains, I haven't read The Mountains Echoed by him yet. But if you're a fan of him and his writing and how he writes about Afghanistan, this might be something that you want to pick up as well. I thought that there were some beautifully written passages in here. Um, just the way the, the the sentences were written. Like every once in a while, I would just stop and say, wow, that was, that was really good. This was an easy five stars for me. And it's one that I have thought about m multiple times since I've read it. Since I read so many books, sometimes I finish a book and I kind of forget what it was about because I mainly read for enjoyment, so I'm okay for that. But this, I do feel like I learned a lot about Afghanistan and I loved this young girl's story. I like how her story was the vehicle to teach me about, to, about the political situation in Afghanistan, but done in such a beautiful way. Yeah, I loved this book. I loved it so much. Sparks Like Stars, Nadia Hashimi, so good. The other book that was on my uh, TBR that I did complete this month was Piranesi by Susanna Clark. <laughs> 
I went into this knowing it was going to be a weird book and it was a weird book. I'm so glad that I read this with a handful of my patrons because it was fun to talk about it with other people to, and see that we had different ideas of what was going on. The structure of this book is set up so that there are seven different parts. And after part one, I was like, what did I get myself into? Do I need to DNF this book? Because I was not invested whatsoever at the beginning. As it went on, I became more and more intrigued. And I wanted to know answers <laughs> to things and kind of see what was going to happen and where it was going to go. Was this a book for me? Not, not so much. I think I ended up giving it three stars. And it's really a difficult one to talk about. Learning the answers along the way is really a big part of it. But ultimately, there's this man, Piranesi. He lives in this world that's ultimately like this a huge, 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 massive, massive house. And by massive, I mean like miles long. Like the world is this house to the degree where the lower floors are oceans and there are tides within the house. So the beginning of the book, Piranesi is kind of moving around in the house and traveling to the Northwest Corridor and the Vestibule 92 and the South Side. And like, it's just confusing and I was not able to grasp the setting at all. And there wasn't too much of a plot quite yet. But the only other person that Piranesi comes in contact with um, is the other and the other is on this search. And so therefore, Piranesi is also on this search for this kind of great and secret knowledge that is apparently hidden somewhere in the house. So the other thinks. So there are a lot of questions that pop up along the way. I don't necessarily think I got all the answers to my questions. I'm not ever one who loves a, a an ending that is not concrete or or is somewhat ambiguous. And I feel like this that I still had questions when I finished this book. And it was a fun read because I was able to talk about it with other people. Do I understand why it was on people's favorites of the year? No, not really. <laughs> not really at all. Am I keeping it on my shelves? Not in the least bit. No way, Jose. So I'm glad that I read it. I needed to know. And now I know it wasn't for me, but it was okay. I did, I definitely was invested at one point. I definitely needed to know what was going to happen, but yeah. I will talk next about the three books that I read that were NetGalley books, all three of these. I'm really pleased with myself for reading some NetGalley books and I just kind of was on a kick for some, I wanted some lighthearted romance reads. That's what I was in the mood for. So I did read Games in a Ballroom, which is one of my anticipated reads. I think it comes out in May. Look at me reading, it, <laughs> reading a book before it's actually out. Games in a Ballroom was a, by Gentry Flint. It's a lot of fun. It's about these kind of childhood best friends. He has discovered that he's in love with her. She has not come to that discovery. <laughs> her dad, who's kind of awful, is determined for her to marry a titled gentleman. And she puts on this persona or tries to become the lady that her dad wants her to be instead of the practical joke, kind of fun loving girl that he grew, that Edward grew up with. In order to kind of draw out that side of her again, comes up with this idea that they're going to play tag at all of these balls and dinner parties and things. So Edward and his two friends and the girl whose name I, I can't remember right now, and her friend, who's Edward's sister, the five of them are who's going to play tag. And the trick is they can't let anyone else see them uh, or catch them playing tag with each other. So it's just, it's cute. It's fun. It's lighthearted. It's definitely a sweet romance. There's, I think, a kiss at the end. And that's as far as we go, as far as like physical connection. I gave it four stars because I really thought it was a lot of fun. And then I read On a Night Like This by Lindsay Kelk. And this one is modern day. It's not definitely not a Regency romance. This woman is a little bit down on her luck. She is, uh, she has this fiance who is not the greatest. I really didn't like him at all. Um, she is a temp personal assistant. That's uh, what she's really good at. And she gets this temp job for a celebrity and is kind of whisked away onto this yacht and they are traveling to this crystal the celebrity is supposed to be singing at this crystal ball oh yeah did i say that this is kind of a cinderella retelling it's kind of a cinderella retelling but very loose cinderella retelling so she goes on this boat with her celebrity boss 
people have warned her about this celebrity and how tough she can be. And she kind of sees another side to her, but ultimately the celebrity does her, does her dirty and our main character finds her way to go to the crystal ball. Things ensue from there. Uh, she meets, there's a meet cute with a gorgeous young man at a, at a convenience store and she's trying to pick up something for her, for her boss, uh, knocks everything over, including this guy and um, turns out he's going to be at the ball, of course. And yeah, it just, it was super cute. I gave this one three stars, I think. I didn't love it as much as I liked games in a ballroom, but I did think it was a lot of fun and sweet. I think there was a little bit of language in this one. It was a little more contemporary, right? So there was a little bit of language, not a lot. I don't think, I don't think we had any in the bedroom scenes. I think this was pretty, pretty clean as far as sexual content for those of you who need to know that. I can't remember. <laughs> this is kind of how it goes with me in romances though. I often don't remember that too much about them. <laughs> uh, and then the third rom-com that I wanted to read was called Meet Me in the Margins. And I forget who's the author of this one. The picture of it is here. This one takes place at a publishing house and the publishing house is particularly publishing nonfiction, pretty serious works. And one of the editors who works there is attempting to write a romance novel, more general fiction, kind of pop fiction, if you will. And she gets caught with her manuscript at work and has to kind of hide it. She finds a place up in the ARC room, which first of all, how much fun would it be to have a, a an ARC room, an ARC, Advanced Reader Copy room, where you could just go in at any point and, and bring books home. Oh, it just sounds so fun. But she finds a secret room in the ARC room, beyond the ARC room, where she hides her manuscript. Uh, when she goes back to get get it the next day, there are notes all over it, uh, especially uh, there are notes all through the beginning chapters of it, which uh, are a little bit harsh, according to her. She decides to ignore them and tries to get her book published. And the agent also has some harsh words to say about her manuscript. The idea is great, but it needs a lot of work. So she begins this kind of you've got mail type correspondence with somebody that she doesn't know. Actually, there was a lot of you've got mail vibes in this one, which were a lot of fun. We know as the reader who it is that's leaving the notes. She has this whole suspected thing that it's somebody totally different. And I'm like, how can you think it's somebody different? Yeah, it was it was sweet. It was cute. It was all about books and writing and editing and publishing, which was pretty cool. So I ended up giving this one three stars as well. It was just it, it just was hit in the spot. These these books, they were just they were just what I was in the mood for. Moving on, I have two left to talk about and both of these work towards goals that I had for the year. So the next one is The Printed Letter Bookshop by Catherine Ray. I want to read all of the Catherine Ray books that I own on my shelves this year and I haven't yet read any until this one. So I picked up The Printed Letter Bookshop and this is not really a romance at all. There's a slight touch of romance in here but it's really not the focus of the story. Our main character is Madeline and she is a lawyer in Chicago. She has an aunt who lives just north of Chicago who uh, has been kind of estranged from her dad, Madeline's dad and the, and the aunt, Aunt Maddie, have, had been gotten along or really even spoken for years and years. And Madeline, in, in loyalty to her father, even though she lives so close to her aunt, didn't really go visit her that often. Well, Aunt Maddie owns a bookshop and the printed letter bookshop and Aunt Maddie passes away very early on in the in the book and leaves everything, her home, her bookstore, everything to Madeline. There are two women who also work at the bookshop and we get to know their backstories as well and how this bookshop and working together really bonds them and seals their friendship and how they really stand for like stand with each other through some difficult, difficult, really difficult trials in life. And how Maddie did that, Aunt Maddie really did that for these two women. And then how Madeline, these two women are able to, to form a bond with Madeline as, as the book goes on. It really was a beautiful story. I really enjoyed this. I think I ended up giving it four stars. I love the bookshop setting. Love, love, love a bookshop setting. Uh, it is a Christian fiction. I think it will, I could call it kind of faith light. It definitely plays a role in in some of the healing that happens throughout this book. But I, I thought it was really well done and I really enjoyed this. So I gave it four stars. 
The last book that I want to talk about that I've read so far this month is called When Mockingbirds Sing by Billy Coffey. I own quite a few books by Billy Coffey and haven't, hadn't yet read any of them and now I have. So yay, completed part of that goal. When Mockingbirds Sing takes place in a very small town and they kind of close their ranks. So this family moves in and they are considered outsiders. They come from away, according to other people in the town, and aren't easily making their way, finding their way in this town. Well, the daughter, Leah, is also a little bit ostracized because she has a stutter and just has a difficult time expressing herself sometimes. But Leah, one day, is given this drawing table. She likes to do art. For her birthday, somebody makes her a, a, an art table. And one of her first paintings is incredibly detailed and reveals information, if you will, that she shouldn't know and changes the lives of, of people in the town. She attributes this completely to the Rainbow Man, which is somewhat of a of a an imaginary friend or is it God or what? At first, everybody is kind of taken aback by the fact that Leah drew this picture and it had such drastic impact on other people. The preacher and a few others are quick to judge and say, no way, this is not good. We're not going to have anything to do with this. You need to leave the art town, basically. They don't leave. The family doesn't leave. And she draws a couple other pictures and it becomes a big deal. It becomes a big deal. Newspapers get involved. The town is up in uproar and it's kind of divided down the middle and comes to a head. It just definitely, like it's a boiling pot that just gets more and more intense as the book goes on. So we have a divided town, a young girl who sees the rainbow man and only draws and speaks what he tells her to. And then the town's reaction just begin to swirl and, and get crazy around her until it gets very intense. And I can't say where it leads to, but it definitely had me on the edge of my seat. I often was like, is this actually like God that she's talking to? Like, is it the Lord that's speaking to her and giving her these almost prophetic visions into insights into what things that are going to happen? And ultimately, I believe that it was. So it just it's just a very strange but interesting read. I definitely can see myself reading more from Billy Coffee. I don't know if he always has this kind of strangeness to his books that this one had. But yeah, I would be I would be interested. In, in reading more from him. I really, I, I really enjoyed this and I think I gave it four stars. So these four plus, plus my little note that reminded me of the three others that I read. So I read seven books so far this month, which is crazy. I'm really pleased. I think I really enjoyed, I mean, I always usually have three and up. I don't usually have a two star read in, in the mix. And I'm even this one, which was so weird. I can appreciate that the writing was good and I liked what she did with it and how she did pull me in even after the beginning being so what? So that even that got three stars, but I would love to hear how the beginning of April has been going for you. Have you found any favorites of the year like I did in Sorks Like Stars? Did you have any duds? What kind of vibe are you feeling right now in your reading? Do you notice any trends? Let's chat about these things or anything else that you want to in the comments down below. You guys know I love talking with you down there and that is going to do it for me today. I appreciate you so much for being here and watching me ramble on around the, about these books today and I will be talking with you in another video very soon. Bye!